This is Ben with bkashaaudio.com, and in this video, I'm going to give an overview of how to map a gamepad for use in Sunvox to get a more LSDJ-like workflow. I'm only going to be covering how to do this in Linux, as that's what my machines run, all my machines run. Uh, you can achieve something similar using programs on other platforms, but you're on your own for that. This requires at least Sunvox 2.1 or greater, because we need the new brush controls in order to play back notes when we shift them up and down by octave or by half step. Now, gamepad input is not directly supported in Sunvox, so to achieve this, we'll need to use a third-party piece of software called Anti-Micro X. I'll have a link to this in the description so you can download it. I'm on a Fedora 37 system, so I just installed the flat pack. I went to my software center, searched for Anti-Micro X, and went ahead and installed it. And this allows us to map the gamepad commands to corresponding keyboard commands, which is what we're going to do. So once you install that, you are going to want to launch it. And we're going to create a new profile. I'll include a link to my mapping here. I don't know if, it's, if you have a different type of controller, if it'll map correctly, but you can certainly use it as a reference for whatever you choose to map. We want to open up Anti-Micro X. We also want to open up Sunvox. And I have a small chiptune-like template over here with some, you know, typical Game Boy-like noises. We can use that for our example. And I've gone ahead and created a mapping layout. What I'm using for this is uh, just a cheap Snakebite controller, PS3 style. I think I got it for $15 uh, almost 15, 20 years ago. And we're going to just go over some of the basic mapping. You can do this however you like. This is what I decided to do. But I tried to sort of follow the LSDJ shortcuts to a certain extent. Now, there is a limitation to know with the Anti-Micro X software is that if you want to do certain combinations that you would do in LSDJ, for example, hold down the A button and then press the B button or vice versa, you don't have the ability to do that. But what you can do is you can use this feature called sets. And if we look at the bottom of the software, you can see we have these slots that we can go between. So you can set up a modifier key, which allows you to go to different sets. So in this example, I use select to get to set two. And when I press select on the controller, you can see it switches over to set two. And then I use the L2 trigger to get to set three. By using these modifier keys, I can get to different controller sets. And how I map this is, we'll go over to the image here, and we'll pull up Sunvox. I set it so the circle button does note entry, right? I can come here, I can enter in a pattern, and then using the start button, it will play the pattern and stop it. Uh, I can take any one of my notes, and let's actually do a, uh, a musical note here. So I'll switch to a different device. We'll just do our uh, pulse. Okay, and I can take that note, and I can shift it a half step up or down. And then if I hold down select, that will give me access to the octave which is similar to what you can do in LSDJ. So when I hold down select, that brings me to set two. And you can see I've got octave down and octave up mapped here. Edit toggle is our L1 trigger button. So that allows me to lock and unlock node entry. By default, I have it set. So if I play back and then I stop playback, it'll unlock itself. I've chained those patterns. We can do backspace, insert with the square button. I can copy a single note by using X. Up and down is just up and down. We can select a different track. So if I set my pattern here to have a couple different tracks, we can select the different ones and do note entry. 
I'll have a uh, copy of this mapping on my website that you can get to in the link description. I'm not going to go over every single control that I mapped, but um, I get a good portion of them in there, and I could have used more sets as well and more modifiers, so I definitely could have uh, set a different button to call up like a set 4 or set 5. There are significantly more shortcuts in Sunvox than there are in LSDJ, so you may want to do that. Let's do a simple mapping example together. Say we want to take the start button and map it so that the first time you press it, it plays back a pattern, and the second time you press it, it stops playback. In Sunvox, that's going to be F11 the first time to play a pattern, and then F12 to stop it. If we move on over to Anti-Micro X, you can press the start button. It'll highlight it in the interface so you can see where it is. We're going to click on it, and it opens up this menu. Now, if we wanted to just map a single key, we would press that key on the keyboard and it would be mapped. In this example, we could either press on our keyboard or press on the virtual keyboard, like shift or something, but that's not what we want. We want to do a chain of commands. So we're going to click on advanced and under assignments, I'm going to start from scratch. So I'll delete what is here. And we are going to first say, when you press the button, fire off F11. F11 will play back the pattern. Now we're going to highlight this field, and I'll just enter anything. It, this is a weird behavior. You have to like enter in a shortcut before you can highlight it. All right, I'm going to right click on P, and we're going to choose to set this block to cycle, and I will insert it. What this means is the first time you press start, F11 will fire. Then the second time you press start, it'll cycle. And if we right click on here, we'll choose our secondary key, which will be F12. We gotta click it, left click it, press F12, and it's mapped. And we can go ahead and close this. And if we return over to Sunvox, it should now work. So first press, it loops the pattern. Second press, it stops it. Now let's map something a little bit more complex. Let's do a simple half step up, half step down. If I have a note in Sunvox, the first thing I have to do is highlight it. So we have to go to the note, hold down shift, and press the down arrow on the keyboard. That's our first shortcut. Then to shift it, a half step up or a half step down, we have to use shift plus or shift minus. The other thing that we want is we want to hear the pitch that we are shifting to, and that doesn't happen when you use Shift Plus and Shift Minus, but using a new feature in Sunvox 2.1, we can take that note, and if we put the cursor over it and press Control e it will play it back. We have a sequence that we want to script in Anti-Micro X. For this, I'm going to use the R1 button to shift us up in pitch. We'll navigate over to the interface, and if you hold down the R1 button, you can see it highlights. We are going to click on it, go to Advanced. we got to select a key before we can do that. We'll just press Shift for now. Okay, so first we want to uh, hold down Shift, and then press the Down button to highlight the note. Because we held down Shift, we need to insert a pause so that the modifier is released. So you can choose to insert the shortest pause possible. All right, and that will essentially lift the virtual finger that's holding down shift. Then we want to press the up arrow key. And we're going to actually shift the note up by a half step. So that's going to be shift and then equals. Uh, we want to lift that modifier again. So Select this, insert yet another pause to lift that virtual finger. And then we are going to finally use the brush shortcut, Control and E, to play back the note. So once that's fully mapped, if I take the gamepad, I can go to any note, press the R1 button, and shift it up. Now one other example I want to show is the ability to use a modifier key to get to a different set. As an example, I use the shift key to get to set 2 and the L2 key to get to set 3. The way that you do that is you can go into your set 1 mapping 
and find your chosen modifier key. In this case, it's select, which shows up as back here. Click on advanced. It's going to ask you to enter in any old key. So we'll just enter anything. And once you get into advanced, we can delete that. And we'll go to set selector. And I'm setting it to set, select set to while held, which means I have to hold down the modifier key. You can set it to toggle. Uh, you can set it to go two different ways, but I just like using held because it's very similar to what you do in LSDJ where you hold down a modifier. And that will allow you to get to your other mapping section. So in this case, you know, step two will allow me to get to the octave section if I hold down select and octave up and down. <laughs> That's a quick, simple overview of how to map a gamepad for Sunvox. I'll include the full image of my mapping, the session that I used, as well as the actual mapping file that you can adapt and use. There will be a link in the video description to my site where you can download them all. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and visit bkashaudio.com for more tutorials and videos.